Kalau oh. boleh dengar, komen ada boleh dengar. Anything tak? Itulah saya tengah tengok uh, komen dekat Facebook. Okay, so, dah ada boleh orang dengar. Ada update. So, uh, okay, dah boleh dengar. Jadi kita kena ulang balik dari mula, I think. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Nak ulang balik. Uh, kena ulang balik lah, I guess. Uh, okay. Uh, Abang Cik kata ulang balik. Okay. So, Assalamualaikum semua. Hari ini saya bersama Puan Farah Fadil, Juru Audit Persatuan Autism Muslim Malaysia. Um, yang akan berkongsi tentang, dengan kita tentang pengalaman beliau. Uh, berdasarkan tajuk kita hari ini, ku, uh, kerananya aku korbankan kerjaya ku. Uh, dramatik gitu kan. Okay. Dramatik. <laughs> tak ada tajuk tu. Tak, drama kat tajuk. <laughs> okay. So, um, Puan Farah sekali lagi boleh ceritakan latar belakang keluarga Puan Farah? Okay, uh, kami semua menetap di Shah Alam. Saya memang orang Shah Alam. Ah. Tapi my husband orang Sabah. Kami dikurniakan tiga cahaya mata. Uh, semua lelaki. So I have three boys kat rumah. Anak sulung saya Daniel berumur 15 tahun. Uh, mem, uh, diberi diagnosis uh, autistik. Dia... Uh, sangat uh, special in a way. Sebab... Sebab dia, seluruh keluarga kita orang ni dilatih menjadi terapis. So, oh. adik dia yang nombor dua, okay, adik uh-huh. dia uh, Adam. Adam uh-huh. tahun ni 12 tahun. Okay. Sebab abang dia special, dia automatically take up the terapis punya role. By himself tau, dia sendiri yang nak tolong abang dia. Oh. Lepas tu yang paling youngest, Aaron, Aaron 5 tahun. Uh-huh. Aaron pun sebab dia tengok abang dia buat, dia pun nak ikut. So, oh, jadi Aaron mas- yang kecil tu pun uh, dah faham? Dia cuba memahami sebab dia ada care, diorang ni ada caring character. So I think because diorang very caring, diorang nak tolong abang dia so that abang dia boleh blend in with the family. So kalau ada function family ke, my whole extended family as well as my husband's extended family hmm. semua try jadi Daniel punya kalau bukan terapis, he's playmate. Cun tak? Playmate, shadow aid, tu kan? Ha? Even my uncles, my aunties pun try to participate as well. Because Daniel ada a few selective people yang dia memang suka sangat kacau. Dia kacau ha? sebab dia sayang. Ha? 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 Masa zaman I, hmm. tak banyak online group, support groups and so on so forth. So, kita orang banyak membaca. Bila uh. you ada knowledge, then you boleh empower people around you. So, I said, I baca, my husband baca, then we educate each other. Hmm. So, I educate my mom, my siblings. He did the same thing with his family as well. From there, kita orang expand to our extended family. Uh. So, oh, kita nak share. Okay. Okay. Okay, kita nak share dengan semua apa ni kat sini, semua penonton kat sini. Puan Farah tadi kita uh, dah beritahu saya, dia adalah orang ke-9 yang mendaftar menjadi ahli persatuan oh. autism Malaysia. Orang ke-9 ah, ya. Ah. Uh, ah. 0009. Ah. Memang. Um, so, masa uh, Daniel dapat diagnosis umur berapa? And you mula-mula nampak dia lain masa umur dia berapa? Masa tu um, okay. Adam dah ada ke belum? Masa tu, uh, sebab Daniel ni anak sulung and then kita orang tak ada experience dengan budak-budak lagi. Masa Daniel show symptoms yang lain daripada lain, my husband yang picked up. Dia yang perasan dulu. Lepas tu dia cakap kat I, I think something wrong dengan Daniel lah. I was in denial. Okay, mak-mak kan. So, cakap tak, anak I okay, anak I okay, anak I okay. Sampai satu tahap, I sendiri terdetik. Uh, alah, something wrong. Because I tengok milestone dia, mm-hmm. dia tak, dia regress uh, masa dia umur 18 bulan. Oh, sebelum tu memang nampak okay je? Sebelum tu dia punya progress, mm-hmm. milestone, semua cantik. Mm-hmm. And then, bila dia, dia masuk, Bulan ke-18, dia dari sebut perkataan clear, hmm. dia jadi mumbling, lepas tu dia start tunjuk, lepas tu dia tak ada suara langsung keluar. Oh, okay. So, from that, I cakap, okay, fine. I have to accept. 
I read the, I have to, hold on, hold on. Erin. Out. Yeah, this is Erin. Erin, show your face. What? Okay. <laughs> okay, sorry. Erin, Erin, you want to be in the room? Be quiet. Okay, my my second therapist. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, I uh, I was in denial, tapi because I just start reading because I think my husband has started reading on autism or on learning disabilities and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. I pun terdetik maybe something is wrong with my elder son. So I cakap dengan my husband, jomlah kita bawa dia pergi pediatrician. Masa tu Dr. Ling dekat mm -hmm. uh, Selangor Medical Center. Okay. Kita orang Coach dia cakap dengan dia, Dr. Ling, based on your experience, you tengok my son, you rasa dia ni uh, ADD ke, ADHDH ke, dia autis, I tak tahu, autistic ke, I main bantai je, autistic uh -huh. ke, or ada other, other, other learning disability. Uh -huh. So, based on his observation, dia ada buat a few tests, dia kata it's either ADD or autism. So, dia kasih, from there, dia kasih NASO punya number. Ah, okay. From there, I contacted Nasum, set appointment. Alhamdulillah, tak sampai few, uh, tak sampai one month kita dapat appointment. Ah. Terus dapat the diagnosis. Masa tu umur dia dah dua tahun ke belum? Dia baru nak masuk dua tahun. Masa tu I was about to get pregnant dengan Adam. Wah, ah. masa tu I takut tau because boy kan. I found out he was a boy. Ah. Alah, boy lagi ke? <laughs> Uh, autism kan very high chances yes, yes. Uh, for that. Uh -uh. And then autistic uh, individuals yang I tahu at that time. Uh. Okay, so from there kita dapat appointment dengan Nasum. We got the diagnosis done dekat Jalan Pahang. Masa tu Nasum kat Jalan Pahang kat KL. Uh. And then uh, after two and a half hours dekat Nasum buat all sorts of interviews dengan Tess. Dia punya child psychologist Offhand cakap, Puan, anak Puan autistik. Ini 13 tahun yang lalu. No, this was when, ah yes, 13 ha. tahun yang lalu. Ha. Masa tu di umur, dua, nak masuk 2 tahun setengah. Masa tu uh, internet, internet dah ada tapi kalau on, kalau you search dekat online tu banyak ke yeah, info yang you dapat? Dia very general, very, dia very, how should I say, Not as specific as what we have now. Just sekarang ni macam the support group and then kalau uh, your, within your support group you can have your own macam WhatsApp you have your own group of parents uh -huh. autistic kids. Dulu mana ada? Betul-betul. Dulu uh -huh. you pun tangkan ting sorang-sorang. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so um, Daniel diagnosed 13 tahun yang lalu. So masa tu uh, apa uh, you apa Kejaya you. You, 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 you tengah buat apa masa 13 tahun lalu? Uh, you kerja sebagai apa? I was a lecturer dekat Multimedia University. Mm -hmm. I baru bar, uh, dalam proses buat my masters, nak mm -hmm. siapkan my masters. So bayangkan eh, the mental torture uh, sebab anak you dia dapat diagnosis autistic macam tiba-tiba you rasa your heart pecah seri, retak seribu. Yes, yes, I yeah, I can imagine that, yes. Menangis saja, kerja menangis hmm. saja sebab I never expect this to happen to me. I never expect this to happen to any of my family members. Mm -mm. But it did. Yeah. And then no one can console me because semua orang tak tahu what is autism at that time. Betul-betul. Uh, uh. Macam you pergi planet uh, sorang-sorang je dekat situ. Yang uh, lain daripada uh. orang lain. Uh, uh. So... Sebab Daniel masa tu dia kecil lagi tapi when he progress dia dah start um, show his aggressive side. Mm. Uh, dia Daniel dulu aggressive sebab dia he hurt himself. Dia suka bang kepala kat dinding, kat lantai mm. sampai lebam-lebam. Masa umur berapa dia, tu? Masa tu dia tiga tahun. Okay. Tiga tahun tu lepas tu kalau gigit nyamuk pun dia garuh sampai berdarah sebab dia tak okay. rasa sakit. Ah, yelah, yelah. Ah. Dia tak ada pain is, uh, receptors yang tell him stop, this is painful. Dia tak rasa langsung. So, dia so boleh kalau tak perasan memang, memang, memang uh, he will hurt himself lah eh? Ah, so ah. dia sentiasa kena monitor. Ah. 
Hmm. Masa tu I kerja, I was a, I was a lecturer kat Multimedia University kat Cyberjaya. So, uh, masa tu kita orang bergantung banyak pada pembantu rumah. Mm-hmm. Lepas tu kadang-kadang my mom drop by the house sebab rumah dia dekat dengan rumah I. Mm-hmm. So, ada reporter lah. My mom pun dulu reporter juga. <laughs> So dia report balik apa my mate buat and ter- uh-huh. kita ada therapy session dekat rumah. Uh-huh. Tapi because I think sebab dia tak ada family figure kat rumah tu, I rasa macam missing something to help push him forward. So me and my husband, kita orang dua-dua kerja baik lambat. Uh-huh. Even though I have a, a, a work yang boleh allow I to work flexible uh, hours at that time. Tapi sebab uh-huh. kadang ada examination, I baik lambat, weekends kena kerja. So, that time, that quality time tu tak ada sangat at that time. Uh-huh. Okay. So, I started uh, masa tu. I start nak buat my PhD proposal. My husband tiba-tiba cakap kat I. Uh-huh. Yang, dah lah yang, you duduk rumah lah jaga at Daniel. Nanti I take care of you, I take care of the family. How how did you feel? Uh. So you guys do macam ni tu? Bila hasil macam ni tu, you guys apa? Mula-mula uh, rasa cair. Uh. Lepas tu tiba-tiba kan reality hits you. Uh. <gasps> macam mana nak uh, support the family, the bills and so on so forth kan? Uh-huh. So what we did was, um, banyak benda we cut down. We only focus on Daniel and the kids with education. Hmm. His therapy, oh my god, it was the bomb. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but we have therapists coming to the house tau. We hmm. did uh, Daniel ABA therapy. Hmm. And at that time, he was homeschooled uh, with ABA therapy. So the first uh, dua tahun terawal, dia dekat rumah, dia tak masuk sekolah lagi. Uh. I, sebelum, uh, sebelum I resign, I So I talk to my supervisor sebab my supervisor dah da- daftar my PhD punya proposal. Oh, okay. dia, so the, the ball had, had dah rolling dah sebenarnya untuk PhD tu. Dah rolling dah sebab uh. my proposal, okay, Didi, uh, my proposal punya topic was software that can help autistic kids pick up learning. Uh, dia dah, dia dah, 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 dah ni dah kan, dah tailored tu ni dah. Ha. Je. Lepas tu uh. I dah cakap dengan my, uh, my supervisor, uh. I think I am needed more at home because he is, uh, Daniel ada terapi, ada orang monitor dia tapi dia tak ada orang nak push dia, tak ada orang to show him that he is love more or cat more sebab orang yang kat rumah selalu dengan dia itu my mate dengan my mum. Yeah, ada baby I... lagi eh. Uh. Ah, so he needs someone to push him, to nourish him, to give him the love that he needs. So that dia boleh buat more. That he can perform more. Daniel sebab dia dulu dari um, dia dari agresif. Mm-hmm. Bayangkan eh. Bila I quit my job, I dah resign and my supervisor mengamuk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, even my bosses on top of me pun, they understand tapi they mm-hmm. are very sad to let me go because we're very close and my work ethics is different because I orang kasih kerja, I buat but I buat the, mo- the most simple the most the best way possible mm. with less uh, complaints so mm. my boss suka when i quit my job seven years ago mm. okay i was a lecturer i was about to submit my phd mm. i noticed okay that this could be the biggest gamble but the best investment that i did for my family mm. why but daniel very aggressive did drop jadi someone who is very caring now. He no longer hurts himself the way yang dia selalu buat when he was 3 years old. Bayangkan dia dari 3 tahun sampai dia 6 ke 7 tahun, he still bangs his head dekat the lantai, dekat dinding, so dia still buat. Hmm. Bila I stop kerja, uh, dia perasan okay, someone is watching over me. Hmm. I don't need to get attention that way anymore. So it shows that ha. Ha. Yeah. Ha. It shows that despite the therapy yang dia dapat daily is is not enough. But ha. your present, your love kan yang ha. Ha, I want to shower him with love. Tell hmm. him, "Oh, I love your work." Cuz Daniel suka uh, an intricate 
uh, artwork, dia suka main piano, dia learn everything by ear tau. Uh, he can hmm. play uh, Bohemian Rhapsody oh. by ear. Yeah. Hmm, dia boleh challenge tak? <laughs> he can play on his keyboard. Kalau pergi rumah orang, he can play the piano. Dia memang kalau ada attention, dia memang he, he dia suka sangat attention. So I noticed that was the best thing that I did. I resigned so I can give him full attention so that he blossom. Yeah. Daniel is, uh, he's a very loving person. Mm. Very loving. So the he he wants orang to know that he's there mm. and he wants your love and attention all the time. So that's why I, I think that's the best investment that I did. I resign. And I focus on the family, punya needs. Mm-hmm. Daniel pun, uh, he's, yeah, he's doing well. I would mm. say he's doing well. Dia tak academically, uh, how should, he's not really a academic person. Dia more to living skills. So, dia suka artwork. His artwork kan, kita uh-huh. orang boleh jual. Wow. He's the highest. Uh, Bida hari tu dia punya artwork simple lah Dia buat intricate draw uh, colouring uh-huh. Ada orang beli sampai 200 lebih oh, <laughs> Kalau tak ada so, hari tu berapa lah Itu <laughs> <laughs> lah So I cakap, are you sure you, uh, you want to buy that No, dia memang dia memang dia kasih that price So they are paying that much So I cakap, okay fine This one is for Daniel Keep aside for his, you know late, uh, Later days uh-huh. uh, so, uh, Kita orang Yeah So like Um Dulu you full time kerja, you hari-hari and then uh, you got your students, your colleagues and then bila bila you manage your families, apa 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 uh, perbezaan yang paling besar yang you rasa? Uh, selain daripada perubahan pada Daniel tu lah. Because uh, <laughs> uh, when you are at home, you hmm. sentiasa ada aktiviti yang melibatkan your family, your kids especially kan, you kena monitor hmm. orang punya uh, homework, Daniel even though dia tak, uh, sekarang ni si MCO kan, so dia mm-hmm. dicutikan daripada March, even mm-hmm. though dia tak beri lah, every week ada kerja dia, or ev- almost every few days ada kerja daripada cikgu-cikgu dia, so kita orang kena monitor dia orang punya kerja, compile, hantar, compile, hantar, tapi mm-hmm. macam, when you do that, you rasa macam you jadi robot. Ah, uh, yelah. <laughs> Sebab dari rutin tak, and rutin tu dia melibatkan orang lain and you tak rasa macam you are fulfilling your own needs. Mm-hmm. Betul? Mm-hmm. So, because of that, I started picking up hobbies. Uh, okay, ceritakan. Okay, my, I have, um, I suka, ber, bukanlah bercucuk tanam, tapi kalau I tanam, benda tidur. <laughs> uh, green fingers. <laughs> I, I suka gardening. So, I have a small garden kat sebelah rumah and kalau I buat gardening, Daniel akan duduk kat luar dan tolong I. So, dia kalau dia, uh, I rasa dia nak buat fine motor skill, I tolong, I suruh dia tolong cabut rumput kat dalam pasu. Mm-hmm. While mummy trim pokok ke apa-apa, dia suka ikut I. Dia suka ikut I. So, kalau dia malas nak buat, I'll just ask him, okay, Daniel baring. Baring on the mat lepak kat sebelah mami, mami buat kerja. So, mami, oh. uh, kalau I tengah gardening kat luar, dia akan baring kat sebelah. Ah, teman yeah. mami. Uh. Ha, sambil-sambil tu, uh, teman mami, dia ada ada breeze, ada angin, ada burung, hmm. ada kucing kat luar. Semua dia main, dia entertain. Just relax saja. Hmm. Kalau yang lagi dua orang ke, <laughs> Adam dengan Aaron tu, tak nak ikut. <laughs> tak, tak, tak kisah pun. <laughs> tak kisah pun. They are very... Uh, not so outdoors. Daniel is outdoors. So, dia akan sentasi ikut I buat kerja kat luar. And then, other than that, uh, I have, I suka bermuay thai. Uh. <laughs> so, my me time is when I go out to exercise or sekarang dah tak boleh keluar kan. So, my uh. me time is when I lock myself in my room and I on my muay thai workout. Muay thai ni is thai kickboxing. Ah. So from there I release out all my stress by punching, by kicking, sepak, whatever and all that to my stress level drop. 
Kalau you tak sihat and you don't do it for few days, how would you feel? Kalau I tak sihat, hmm. I tak bermuay tai, nanti I demam. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Sebab I dah biasa uh, work up mungkin kalau uh, with, dalam satu minggu empat ke lima kali. Yeah. Kalau I satu minggu tu I tak, tak work up kan, nanti yeah. I akan sentiasa demam sampai I start balik. I think sebab ah. the body dah biasa bergerak kan. Uh-uh. Tak gerak ke whatsoever, badan uh. you rasa macam lemau. <laughs> So it's good kan? Exercise is very important, very good for everybody kan? Uh, sebab since MCO ni, budak budak ni tak boleh nak keluar sangat, hmm. kita orang, me and my husband, kita orang paksa the boys exercise kat rumah. Daniel hmm. kan, since uh, MCO, dia turun more than 10 kilos. Oh, banyak Just tu lah. exercising. Exercising hmm. and diet semua tak ada. Just exercise je. Uh. So now dia punya upper body tu kira ada shape lah, dia lah muscle-muscle sikit kan. So uh. macam, mm, not bad, jadi mummy punya bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> Tapi dia seronok tak? I mean other than uh, losing weight, dia seronok tak? Dia suka? Is he enjoying dia, it? I think, I think sebab kena paksa, dia tak berapa uh. suka sangat. Tapi sebab masa dia exercise, dia dapat extra attention. Yang tu dia suka. Oh, uh, okay. Then he keeps on attention. Hmm. Budak-budak yang suka tantrum ni sebenarnya diorang nak attention, parents. Uh-uh. Bila diorang throw ten- tantrum ke meltdown ke, the first thing diorang nak is tengok parents dia pay attention ke tak? Uh-uh. Kalau I pay attention that I mean macam they, they win a bit of their wall. Betul, betul. So say if you are, imagine if you are still working full time, of course you dah habis PhD, you you uh, you still as a lecturer, do you think you would have apa energy? and time to give as much attention as what you are doing now to Maybe. all the children ha ah. kalau you refer to working people kan hmm dia orang akan rasa satu dia akan rasa satu guilt yang do dia orang mostly akan rasa macam bersalah sebab they cannot spend time with their family if they're working full time hmm sorry to say that cuz hmm. last time i pun rasa macam tu juga cuz i rasa hmm. macam Mummy is always at work, kan kena weekends kena kerja. Kalau weekdays, kalau malam kalau ada meeting or invigilation sampai pukul 10, 11 baru sampai rumah. Mm-hmm. So the guilt too is always there. Even though your weekends you spend, you take them out. Tapi you rasa macam terkejar-kejar. You tak boleh nak balance out between mm-hmm. your family and work. Tapi for those who can, well done. Okay. Like, Sebab, jangan mm-hmm. jumpa orang yang boleh buat. You <laughs> boleh balance your family and your work at the same time. Mm-hmm. Memang rare, rare, rare breed. But in and your case, you aspect. can see that Daniel really flourish kan? Really berkembang yeah. lepas you kan? Ha. He did. Uh, bayangkan from someone who's aggressive to someone who is very loving mm. and they're very attentive. They're, he's the type yang suka buat problem solving. Uh, you can see the puzzle ke whatsoever. Semua dia boleh buat. Mm-hmm. No matter how hard it is, he just wants you to sit next to him. Dia akan buat. Dia suka attention. So kalau bayangkan kalau saya tak berhenti kerja kan, mm-hmm. he will not get to this level on his own. Mm-hmm. Even though I ada during weekends, I'm always with him and all that. Kalau saya tak berhenti kerja last time, mm-hmm. maybe he will not go get to this level. And maybe he will still self hurt himself. He might not be in his best health. Mm-hmm. And he might not be able to express himself. Dulu dia langsung tak boleh cakap. Now dia more vocal. Uh, dia pandai menyanyi, hmm. pandai main piano, semua play by ear. So, yalah, he loves attention. He flourish with attention. And you cakap dia tak boleh cakap tu sebab dia non-verbal ataupun dia tak nak bercakap. Dia, dia tak nak communicate dengan you. Dia tak nak, you know, ex- express. Ah, tak nak komunikasi. Bukan dia tak boleh bercakap kan? He, he uh, has the word tapi, he had the word tapi tak, tak, tak boleh connect. Ah, uh, like dia that? tak kerti uh. nak guna the words that he has. Dia banyak words tapi dia tak hmm. kerti nak guna kerja, tak kerti nak express at that time. Hmm. Now sebab kita selalu kat rumah, hmm. you cakap lah dengan anak you as frequent as possible. Kalau dia salah, you betulkan. Kalau dia salah, you betulkan. Kalau you salah, dia akan betulkan. Uh, Daniel yeah. dia Pick up tau, dia pick up, dia uh. pick up, just like you have to always give him the chance to uh, learn. Jangan 
pelekihkan dia punya skills. Mm-hmm. You pick up dia punya strength. Kalau kekuatan dia dekat uh, bahagian arts, mm-hmm. encourage dia. Kalau dia suka bahagian akademik, encourage dia. Budak-budak mm-hmm. autistic ni ada satu skill yang orang suka sangat. From there, you push that skill, you give up that skill biar dia rasa proud. Oh wow, my parents perasan I boleh buat ni. Mm-hmm. Nanti lagi dia suka buat. You tak payah nak marah whatsoever. You just puji orang kalau mm-hmm. dia buat something yang baik. Kalau dia nakal, divert orang punya attention to doing something good. Hmm. Budak-budak autis ni, uh, lagi you marah, lagi dia jadi degil dan tak nak dengar cakap you. Mm-hmm. So, you use reinforcers, reward system, mm-hmm. encourage orang. Sebab, orang ni, they feed on your attention. Kadang-kadang you marah-marah-marah kan, you tak perasan mm-hmm. tau, orang suka dengar you marah. <laughs> tantrum, sebab uh. you pay attention. Mas, mm. Even though the wrong attention tapi because you pay attention. Mm. So for me, sebab I give him what he wanted, the eye contact, mm. the physical uh, hugs to calm him down. Kadang-kadang uh, hugs and kisses. Dia punya, Daniel punya reward senang. Dia nak cium, dia nak peluk, dia nak makan. Tu je. Mm. So kalau dia accomplish something yang dia suka sangat, I tanya dia, you nak apa mami masak? Mm. Senang. <laughs> Kalau ada budak yang tipikal kan, orang nak mainan lah, nak apa lagi. My kids uh-uh. tak, orang mami, I want you to cook this, I want you to cook this, I want you to cook uh-uh. this. <laughs> so I can do that when I'm at home. Okay lah, sebab, you know, like so much of, uh, satu hari 24 jam, you still cannot ask for more time in a day kan. So, yeah. Uh-huh. Hmm. And, and okay, then, uh, uh, because you have a uh, family time, kalau boleh, Pay attention to everyone equally, including mm. your partners, your life partners. Mm-hmm. Everything kena balance. Jangan mm. fokus on anak yang special je, yang lain terabai. Uh-huh. So, you kena pandai balance your relationship dengan your husband, your wife and your other kids as well. Because, Barulah, you, huh. you have the harmony. Huh? Kita bukan uh, ibu kepada anak autism je kan? Kita isteri, <laughs> kita <laughs> anak, kita kan? Ha. Uh-uh. So ni ada ada uh, ada your your ex office mate uh, Abi Ashraf pun ada kat sini. <laughs> Hi Abi. Ram- ramai juga ramai yang share uh, uh, anak-anak yang regress after 18 months. Ada yang share ada adalah juga yang share yang lain. Hmm. So um, so sebab I tak ada experience. I memang my ambition masa dekat uni pun ambition dah macam I want to be a soccer mom. Saya cakap dengan my husband, Ooh. okay, bila bila you've earn uh, this much, masa tu belum belum husband lagi lah. Saya cakap, oh, if you earn this much, this much, I nak berhenti kerja. But somehow, um, sebab I got married sebelum habis belajar. So, and then... Uh, bila dah habis belajar, dah pregnant, so tunggu first baby delivered. And then my husband kata, oh ada kemungkinan nak transfer. So waited lah, tak payahlah cari kerja lagi sebab baby pun kecil lagi. And then got another baby. <laughs> dah transfer, got another baby. Ah. Ah, so macam, oh I think okay lah. Um, although tak earn as much as yang, yang mula-mula saya cakap tu. So, and then after masa baby, the, the second baby dah about, um, what, belum two years lagi, kakak the first one got diagnosed. So, lagilah macam, okay, tak apalah. I just uh, handle the kids, manage the kids. Tak payahlah nak cari kerja lagi kan. So, that was how macam, yelah, I got my ambition early. So, jadilah driver, kan, bawa pergi terapi and everything. So, seriously, macam, uh, I'm sure macam susah kan daripada dual income kepada satu income. Kan, uh, drastically <laughs> macam tu. Uh, macam kerja kita orang. Uh. Ah. Yang mana yang penting? Hmm. So kita orang daripada kahwin memang single income So memang macam tak adalah kata apa Ada effect whether I go to work or not Because that's how we live kan uh. So kalau dah mestilah you pun masa tu dah lecturer Dah habis masters kan um, Macam mana um, other people's reaction Macam your family, your your colleagues My mom marah uh. <laughs> Because she always wanted me to finish my PhD 
saya cakap mummy mummy my family is more important than my PhD uh. so after that she started to say okay I understand mm. then slowly bila ada orang lain tanya kan my mum uh. kenapa Farah tak, tak habiskan PhD ke or go on with PhD nanti dia akan reply cakap macam tu my grandson is more important than her PhD I bangga uh. dengan my mum uh. cakap macam tu yelah it shows that he, she truly understand <laughs> kan ha Because my mom, uh, for her, education is very important. So, mm-hmm. I cakap dengan my mom, uh, Mami, Farah dah ada master's dah lah. Ini tak penting. Because once you ada PhD, lagi banyak you kena buat research lah, kena buat journals lah. So, you imagine how long I have to stay now uh, mm-hmm. at work. You the dah foresee lah kan? Foresee the path, yeah. this path and the another path kan? Uh. And then for for special needs parents, Mm. Uh, parents with special needs children usually uh, they will struggle in the beginning once they understand the flow of taking care of the kids kan mm. Alhamdulillah everything akan berjalan dengan sangat lancar mm. dengan uh, you just have to bear in mind apa yang you ada sekarang ni you gunakan sebaik yang mungkin mm. jangan ada high expectation sangat-sangat mm. you use what you have now to your best uh, abilities. Mm. So, kalau sebab kalau you expect anak you autistic untuk jadi academician, boleh. Tapi mm. dia boleh dia suka tak? Dia nak tak? Jangan mm. letak expectation too high pada anak-anak you kalau diorang sendiri tak minat. So, so nanti you bet- sendiri uh. akan kecewa. So, ha, kena cari strength dia. Kecewa. It's not about what we want yeah. but the strength. Their strength. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yes. So kalau budak-budak yang autistic ni, orang banyak strength. You hmm. you just have to pinpoint the strongest yang yang paling menyerlah, you gilap dia punya skill from there. Hmm. Ada budak-budak suka academic, suka hmm. math, hmm. Uh, ada budak-budak suka arts. So you uh, biarkan dia buat artwork, uh, macam abang, uh, Bang Chi, anak dia Arif, very good in arts kan? Uh-uh. Artwork dia boleh jual tau, uh-uh. not bad. So and then ada uh, some kids uh, autistic, they shine in martial arts, let mm. them do it. Sebab so, all these things memang kalau dorang boleh perform and you bangga dengan dorang kan, they mm. will shine like the stars. Trust me. Sangat, 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 sangat macam, how should I say? As a parent lah, you rasa bangga sangat. Because anak you, even though he's autistic, he's special, mm. tak macam anak orang lain yang sebayangnya dia. Tapi, keistimewaan dia lain daripada lain. Mm-hmm. And when you are proud of your child, your child will know about it. Dia rasa lagi bangga. Mm. Dia rasa lagi disayangi. Dia rasa, dia part of the family and dia rasa macam dia part of the community as well. The cycle of feeling good kan. And then nanti dia pun behave very well. Do work uh, easily kan. So from there you boleh make sure that dia ada future. Uh, hmm. Whether from the strength ni. Dia, kalau dia pandai main piano. Maybe dia boleh perform uh, macam Clarence. Clarence hmm. kan yang nak yes. suka pianis kan. Uh-huh. Umar dia sing. Uh-huh. So they are all making their own albums. They are making concerts and so on and so forth. Semua strength orang. Mm-hmm. Why? Sebab so, parents orang push orang to do well sebab orang tahu ni minat anak aku. Mm-hmm. Anak aku boleh buat ni, I can support dia mm-hmm. sebaik yang mungkin. Tapi for those parents yang anak baru 3-4 tahun kan, ramai yang rasa macam, alamak kita tak nampak lagi apa strength apa ni. Okay, what your advice? Sebab kita bukan nampak masa dari kecil-kecil lagi kan. It takes time to discover their talent. Uh. Untuk budak-budak yang masih kecil yang belum hmm. nampak lagi dia punya keistimewaan dia uh, Nasihat saya untuk parents orang Banyak-banyak bersabar Introduce orang kat macam-macam uh, Jangan simpan budak-budak ni kat rumah hmm. Yang ada orang keluar eh, Sekarang kena simpan uh, <laughs> Sekarang kena simpan lah Nanti lepas <laughs> ini, you boleh uh-uh. lepaskan orang uh-uh. Sebab budak-budak ni Kalau you simpan kat rumah dia rasa terkurung So, uh, so. Macam sekarang ni kan dia si MC also kena simpan orang kat rumah for a time being untuk safety uh, Tapi uh, once dah selamat let them go out Biar uh, dia socialize in society dengan community uh, Diorang akan sendiri pick up 
apa yang orang suka and then from that that strength you give up jadi orang punya who knows dia punya kerjaya di masa hadapan Yeah. So parents kena banyak bersabar dengan budak-budak yang kecil-kecil ni yang 3, 4, 5 years old Because uh, uh. time phase tu memang mencabar Kan yeah. <laughs> We have been through that, we know Yes okay. mm. We have been through that Macam uh. Daniel, diagnosis dia sensory integration dysfunction uh. Everything kena ajar Nak pegang sudu, nak makan, semua kena ajar. Sebab dia, pada dia, pada kita, kita pick up everything naturally. Hmm. Daniel, semua benda tu dia tak tahu buat. Hmm. So, living skills kena ajar, cleanliness kena ajar, social skills semua kena ajar, semua benda kena ajar. Sebab Daniel punya autism level is moderate to se- uh, severe, not mild. Hmm. So kalau parents boleh bersabar and reda dengan the diagnosis, insya Allah, good things will go. Trust me, I have been there from a denied, a denial parent sampai mm. sekarang. I am a very uh, strong advocate for my children, especially Daniel. Mm-mm. So you always believe, believe in your children. Percayalah, they will do well. Mm-mm. They will do well and they will make you proud. They just need your love. Kalau ada, kalau ramai pun parents rasa macam, alah anak dia tak boleh buat ni, tak boleh buat tu. What do you say about it? Dengan tak jumpa talent lagi, Kenapa and then nampak tak banyak benda tak boleh buat. Benda yang dia tak boleh buat. Kan? Kenapa nak fokus kat benda yang dia buat? Fokus yeah. kat benda yang dia boleh buat. So, dia nak cakap, fokus kat dia punya kekuatan dia, strength hmm. dia. Kalau you asyik put uh, expectation kat benda-benda yang dia tak boleh buat, hmm. you sendiri akan kecewa. So, hmm. you fokus kat kekuatan atau sendiri mm-hmm. sebab banyak benda dia boleh buat di di trust yeah. me ha Daniel boleh masak boleh bini Allah anak perempuan ai tak ada anak perempuan so ada <laughs> seorang yang boleh <laughs> in the kitchen okay yeah. <laughs> in the kitchen gardening as well ha <laughs> jadi body kat mami <laughs> ah, alhamdulillah ha. so um It's not easy kan. I mean, kita pun looking back memang masa anak umur 2-3 tahun tu sampai umur 6 tahun, 7 tahun of life lah kan untuk untuk kita. Hmm. untuk. Tapi of course, it's harder, uh, it was harder for the kids sebenarnya kan yes. untuk budak-budak ni. So, macam ni kita uh, nak ubah mindset supaya kita tak So, masa tu, saya, uh, I would say that macam masa kecil, macam sekarang kita ada banyak uh, peluang untuk me time, untuk kita um, spend time uh, for ourselves. Tapi masa kecil kan macam lagi tak boleh nak uh, apa stop bagi attention and then kena jaga betul-betul, tak boleh uh, tak boleh tinggal-tinggal macam tu je kan. So, um, what would you say to those parents yang still sampai malam pun tak boleh tidur lagi sebab anak tak tidur, mak tak tidur and then anak tinggal sekejap pun uh, dah bersepah barang-barang, panjat keluar and everything. Uh. Macam mana tu? Hmm. Parents tak, tak boleh OCD. Ya? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Parents tak boleh OCD pasal rumah, rumah bersepah uh. ke sebab so, budak-budak kecil ni orang uh. belajar melalui mainan. Uh-huh. Kalau benda tu sentiasa disimpan orang tak ada uh, peluang untuk belajar me- bermain. Hmm. Melalui cara orang bermain tu lah, orang akan rasa, oh, kreativiti uh, boleh dibentuk, dibendung dengan melalui uh, cara permainan. Macam, you main Lego, kan hmm. bersepah, right? Uh, yes. Tapi Lego ni build kreativiti, uh, uh, your mind akan sentiasa macam, fo- you boleh fokus tau. Budak-budak hmm. ni kan selalu ada problem fokus up to five minutes kan. Hmm. The moment orang start main puzzles, main Lego, Fokus span diorang boleh sampai half an hour. Hmm. And, and then, more. Uh, uh. And then five motor skill lagi. Ha. Uh. 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 So, ni masa kecil-kecil ni expose kat uh, toys. Hmm. Jangan simpan barang. Parents tak boleh OCD pasal <laughs> uh, rumah bersepak ke pasal ever. Trust me. Uh. Sebab umur 3 ke 5 tahun ni memang time diorang untuk eksperimen dengan uh, mainan dengan benda-benda kat rumah. Hmm. Kalau boleh slowly you ajak orang buat kerja yang you selalu buat. Tengok, okay, mami tengah buat ni, kam, tolong. Tolong. Hmm. 
Bila dia tolong, you kasi reward. Okay, alright. Thank you Daniel sebab tolong Mami. Nah, Mami kasi biskut. Mm. Kalau dia on special diet, kasilah yang benda yang dia boleh makan. Macam uh-huh. my kids dulu, uh, Daniel, uh, GF, CF punya diet. Uh-huh. So, dia cut down sugar. <laughs> uh-huh. So, budak-budak yang kecil-kecil ni, kalau you tak cukup tidur, just sebab jaga anak, uh, mm. anak you malam tu, kalau boleh, minta tolong your partner, help jaga so you boleh rest kejap. Mm. Or you minta tolong your mom or your siblings yang boleh handle your child, tolong jaga so you boleh keluar dengan your husband, pergi dating. Dating tu mm. penting tau. Sebab ramai parents yang I kenal, ada yang bercerai sebab ada anak special needs. Mm. Sebab orang stress pasal anak, communication skill between the husband and wife tak ada langsung. Mm. Please you are with your par- your partners, your mm. husband, uh, you tak nak you dengan family member yang boleh dipercayai for a while, mm. pergi breakfast ke, pergi lunch ke, pergi mana-mana. Mm-mm. Just the two of you and jangan cakap pasal your kids. Uh-uh. Just relax, enjoy your time. Tu pun penting. So, I selalu dating uh, dengan my husband. Cuti masa hari sekolah, masa anak kat sekolah. Husband cuti, ha. and then ah, kan? Ha. So, anak you kat sekolah, so? There so, you go. Ha. Okay. There you go. Hmm. So, it's not like 24 hours kita ni mak je. Ha, For betul. that solid like half a day, you, you tak payah fikir you sebagai mak lah kan? Ha. Kita yes. sebagai isteri je. Ha. Because uh, you are not only a mother, you are also someone's wife or someone's husband. Mm-hmm. So, balance your life. Make the best uh, the best out of everything. Mm-hmm. Jangan terlampau OCD about, oh anak aku, oh, special. I have to do this, I have to do that, blah, 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 blah. Yang lain semua neglected. That's mm-hmm. not balance. Right, Erin? Is it balance? Yes. Yes. Hi. My therapist juga. Hi. Hi. Ni pun my therapist juga. <laughs> uh, so nice. Ada ada apa? Ada adik-beradik Erin ni kan? Uh, but... Of course, um, you bila um, apa Daniel dapat adik, masa tu Daniel in the face yang uh, very uh, difficult face. Masa very tu, challenging ah, face. Challenging <laughs> face. So, you rasa apa masa tu? Ha. Masa tu sebab masa tu I baru come out from my denial that my son hmm. ada problem. Hmm. So, I banyak read up. I can, I memang pantai baca all the online resources, books and all that. Why? Sebab pada I, when you ada knowledge, mm. you empower yourself first Mm-mm. and then you use your knowledge untuk solve your problem. I'm a problem solver. Mm. I tak suka complain ke orang sebab kalau I complain pun bukan orang tu buat apa-apa pun. So mm. I solve my problem by looking for alternative like therapy to help Daniel. Mm-hmm. Lepas tu, uh, masa tu Eric, uh, Adam baru nak keluar. So, mm-hmm. I have to focus on Daniel and Adam. Adam tu masa baby lagi. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, I baru nak siap my masters. Mm-hmm. Masa dia nak keluar. So, memang kena juggle everything together. But it was worth it because I got the whole family to participate in helping Daniel cope with his disability. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you, you really. rasa happy kan bila nampak oh, apa ha, bila bila ada makin besar and yalah daripada dia baby daripada tak buat apa-apa kan and then uh, dah jadi helper kan uh, to reach that stage bukan senang tapi it makes the struggle of like handling um, Daniel and Adam masa tu worth it kan to have uh, kan, you rasa tak? macam uh, my life uh, my life ber- uh, ada purpose Hmm. You rasa you have a purpose Instead of uh, Oh uh, I just duduk rumah Tak apa-apa Tapi Because What you dah uh, Instill kat dalam family You dah semai Kat your hmm. kids And all that Dari kecil Not to be selfish But to be helpful That Simple seed tu Akan blossom to a big tree hmm. And this big tree Gives shade For the entire family And your community So from a simple sacrifice I can see wow yeah I have gone a long way from there <laughs> and I'm very proud of what I've done so far alhamdulillah alhamdulillah itulah sebab ramai parents ada memang ramai uh, ibu bapa uh, ibulah especially yang memang tak kerja 
jaga anak tapi stres ibu-ibu ni yang tak pernah bekerja jadi dia tak tak boleh nak bandingkan macam mana uh, hmm. tidak berada di rumah dengan berada di rumah sepenuh masa hmm. jadi yang selalu akan rasa lebih stres ni ada ibu yang memang dari mula ada ibu uh, ya full time mother yang betul-betul jaga anak di rumah full time mother ha. So, uh, apa uh, nasihat yang you boleh bagi untuk diorang ni? Untuk first ha. time mother ni kan, go and find a hobby. Hmm. Find friends, buat kawan, create uh, macam WhatsApp group yang mak-mak sama geng yang hmm. sekepala. So, from there, kalau you ada macam masalah, you boleh luahkan perasaan you. Hmm. Dekat orang-orang yang faham masalah you. Sebab kita kita ada kawan, tapi kadang-kadang hmm. kawan-kawan kita yang tak ada anak special ni tak faham apa kita punya masalah. Ha, betul, betul. You cerita lah macam-macam, macam betul nanti kan dia kasi feedback yang you rasa lagi hati. <laughs> so, aku ni cerita kau ni faham ke apa aku cerita? <laughs> so, I have a group of parents with special needs children, multi, uh, different different uh, disabilities, ada yang Down syndrome, ada yang uh, dyslexic, all hmm. in the group. So different parents ada different uh, input and feedback mm-hmm. and also output. So mm-hmm. from there, I tak rasa stress duduk rumah sebab I rasa my burden macam kecil je. Ada orang punya problem lagi besar daripada I. Faham tak? And then, uh, where, where do you find these friends? Uh, uh, I'm thinking like support group lah daripada satu. And then naturally you gravitate pada orang-orang yang kepala oh. kan? Ah, kat Facebook, yes. Ah. Some of them found me, some some of them I found them. So most hmm. of them they found me. I think sebab okay. banyak ambil pasal Daniel kot. Uh, the public post kan, yang hmm. nak allow parents to see what uh, progress of Daniel kat rumah and all that. Uh, so they found me, they pulled me into their support group. Uh, so, this It's very nice about different parents at a different level of struggle with mm-hmm. them. Okay. some of them are kids yang dah adult mm-hmm. ada yang kecil lagi ada yang still in school so mm-hmm. this type of support group feedback orang tu macam something sometimes something yang you tak pernah dengar tapi mm-hmm. boleh pakai so when you are in this kind of support group kan you mm-hmm. pun tak rasa stress sangat <laughs> sebab kan <laughs> orang punya feedback macam eh masuk akal juga Oh, kadang-kadang uh. kelakar cerita pasal anak-anak dorang kan. Uh. Pada, pada dorang stres, pada kita kelakar. Oh, pada cerita kita stres, dorang, pada kita stres, pada dorang kelakar. <laughs> so, so, tak payahlah stres all the time <laughs> kan. Ha. So, hmm. tak stres sangat. But it's, hmm. it's very nice when you, you can find these sort of people. I, hmm. I jumpa dorang semua kat Facebook. They found me through Facebook. Uh, so, use Facebook wisely. Guna Facebook untuk yes. cari kawan-kawan. Uh. Facebook my wisely. Yes. Okay, uh, ada apa-apa soalan? Ada yang cakap, oh setuju, find a hobby, betul. Bukan fikir pasal anak je, so, uh, ni kan, sepanjang masa. Hmm. Oh, rumah sepah, semua setuju, rumah sepah. <laughs> Bila ada anak you umur, ha? eh, <laughs> Bila anak, ha, tu lah. Anak you umur berapa baru you rasa, baru baru rumah tak sepah? Ha. Uh, bila budak ni dah besar? Uh, oh, belum lagi? <laughs> Dah, dah. <laughs> uh, macam my boys, I can set rules sebab yeah. diorang main something, toy yang you main tu, you nak, kalau you nak main another toy, toy yang you main tu sekarang ni, make sure dah kemas baru main dengan another toy. Uh. So, kalau diorang main Lego, bersepah on the carpet, kalau dia nak main benda lain, nerf gun ke whatever, kemas Lego tu dulu. Uh. Baru dia main tembak-tembak. So, that's my rule. Memang nampak kemas, tapi still uh. bersepah. Uh. <laughs> I pun baru je, baru tahun ni beli glass shelf. Baru berani. Sebelum ni tak ada. <laughs> Rumah saya ada. Oh. <laughs> sebab, uh, diorang dah pandai, uh, sebab Daniel sekarang, since saya kat rumah, dia dah, uh, pain tolerance dia kan dah kurang macam dulu. Dia dah tahu bila sakit, bila, uh, when is he not supposed to bang his head, dia punya pain tolerance tak macam tak tinggi macam dulu. Dulu kan dia boleh hentak kepala kat simen, kat lin, lantai and all that, tapi tak rasa sakit. Sekarang dia dah, dah kurang hmm. and dia tahu, okay I have uh, I have to stop this. Hmm. So benda-benda kaca semua kira macam dia tahu this is danger. Hmm. 
So you can uh. introduce the concept of danger kat rumah. Yes. Sampai masa boleh kan? Boleh nak hias-hias rumah. It's not forever. The struggle yeah. is not forever. Boleh. Hmm. Tapi, okay, nak parents tak boleh OCD. Ah, kan? <laughs> Go with the flow. Macam itu yang jadi lebih mudah stres. Ada, ada yang ada anxiety, ada yang ni kan. Jadi, dia macam tak apa tak match kan bila kita nak manage anak yang challenging dengan kita emosi tak stabil dia tak susah kan it makes it harder tu tak uh. sebab tu lah you kena ada me time you need hmm. a break regardless you kerja ke you duduk rumah ke everyone kena ada me time this is when you relax eh hey, hmm. sibuk budak kecil ni this is when you relax <laughs> Let go, enjoy your time, and you akan kurangkan your stress level when you do something that you like. That's why I pick a hobby. Mm. Or kalau you suka makan cake, okay, go out to a, uh, a restaurant, makan sesuatu, or with your friends, mm. eat your favorite cake. Just simple bener, simple-simple macam ni pun is considered me time, and it's very good because you rasa... Relax and less stressful when you do it. Hmm. Daripada tiap-tiap hari menghadap benda yang sama, jadi rutin, jadi robot kan? Uh, Make lah. time for yourself. So, kalau sekarang, ha, sekarang tak boleh duduk rumah lagi lah. Anak-anak tak keluar, kita pun tak keluar. Uh, what would you suggest that um, mak boleh buat? Hmm. Mak-mak, kalau hmm. boleh, suruh budak-budak tolong buat kerja rumah. Ah. Dan dia tolong baby lah. Uh, ada je choice yang boleh buat. From there, orang akan rasa macam you are, they are useful kat rumah. Hmm. Dia akan suruh dia main phone je. Sebab kalau main phone, jiwa dia kosong. Hmm. Sebab dia tak rasa orang interact dengan dia langsung. Hmm. So, kalau macam Dania, ada choice yang boleh buat kat rumah. So, that dia buat, dia rasa macam needed, diperlukan hmm. kat rumah. Hmm. Daniel ni dicutikan daripada March tau Since MCO Sampai sekarang tak pergi sekolah Uh lama dah tu ha. Ha, Dah bulan dah tu ha. Tapi kita orang Terapkan living skills untuk dia So hmm. Baking Cooking Masak Maggi Masak telur goreng lah Yang simple-simple hmm. Suruh dia tolong buat Dia tak ada rasa fresh uh, tak keluar ke? Dia rasa fresh tak keluar Tapi ha. Sekarang ni boleh angkut dorang dalam kereta sebab satu kita dua orang kan? Haa. Uh-uh. Rauh-rauh lah, rauh-rauh lah. Haa, uh, kan. Uh. Uh, uh, kalau on weekends and so on so forth, uh, kalau you nak beli makanan dekat McDonald's ke KFC, you can go through the dive, drive-thru. Haa. Uh-uh. Bawa lah yang car dalam kereta, suruh duduk-duduk. Dia boleh tolong pegangkan the food. At least dia tak rasa macam terperap kat rumah the whole time. Sebab uh-uh. macam... Budak-budak ni yang paling low tolerance towards this virus kan. We don't know what's wrong mm-hmm. with uh, mm-hmm. orang immunity. Immunity dia high ke tak. So keep them safe by keeping them at home for now. Mm-hmm. Bila dah okay, you can go out with the, the family. Mm-hmm. So mak-mak ni macam mana? Tadi you cakap you buat Muay Thai kan? So we should we uh, kan ambil masa untuk exercise kan? Buat you, ikut YouTube ke? Ikut kan? Facebook pun ada. Ha. Uh, for me, I ada online group for Muay Thai from my gym. Uh, uh, uh. I love for for those yang uh, baru nak belajar martial mm. arts or exercises or yoga. Mm. Yoga pun best juga. Mm. Pick up yang basic punya uh, videos from YouTube. Mm. Start exercising. Mm. Why? Uh, kenapa I suruh exercise? Sebab bila you renggangkan otot-otot you kan, malam mm. you senang nak tidur. Uh. Through exercise, your body rasa se- lagi sihat. You can maintain your weight. Mm. Uh, you can also drop your cortisol level so you are less stressed. Mm. More happy hormones in mm. your body. Macam okay. last time, uh, last time, how should I say? Last time sebelum Daniel start exercise kan, so masa dah MCO, dia tak boleh keluar mm. rumah. 
perap kat rumah I rasa macam Kesian kat dia So when we started Him on the exercise routine hmm. Dia berpeluh Dia rasa Dia pun rasa excited Dia marah-marah Sebab orang paksa dia exercise Tapi dia yeah. excited In the same way yeah. Dia berpeluh Badan lagi sihat I think dia pun perasan Badan dia lagi sihat And makin handsome tak Kalau you exercise <laughs> So, yeah. so kita lah yang kena susun kan time time for everything ha. kan ha susun, susun time bila nak tolong apa tolong kita kat dapur bila nak exercise sama-sama kan ha so, kalau you boleh you fix your time management so kalau hmm. mothers yang duduk rumah selalu tak ada time for themselves fix hmm. your time management make sure you have time for yourself penting hmm. ya your me time is very important hmm. kenapa kalau tak ada me time, nanti orang tu berjaya gila. Sebab eh. dia tak disayangi. Tak disayangi. Uh. Tak. Mm-hmm. So, you ada your me time, you boleh keluar on your own or with your friends or your family without the kids. Mm-hmm. Or with your partners. Mm-hmm. Penting, you akan rasa lagi uh, disayangi, diperlukan dan you akan berfungsi lagi optimal. Okay, berfungsi lagi optimal. <laughs> <laughs> Macam komputer <laughs> ah, Komputer pun kena rest Tak boleh pakai 4 hours kan nah. It's your super computer lah mm. Or server Happy mom, happy kids Yes, when mm. you are happy They know you're happy, they become mm. happy as well So, so you uh. kena lagi Relax, grounded You kena lagi positive so that you can Empower your kids and your mm. family Banyaklah yang kita nak buat, kita kena cari knowledge. Tapi itulah, bila kita stress, I think cari knowledge pun susah. Nak 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 happy pun susah kan. Nak connect dengan anak-anak pun susah. So, most important thing is happy, not not happiness like happiness, bahagia. Tenanglah, calm. Like, mm. kalau you nak force on happiness tu, so, happiness will come naturally. But, most imp- importantly, manage our stress level. Like, stay calm, mm. stay cool. <laughs> Um, there's a few breathing techniques kalau you rasa mm. macam stress right? so you can mm. practice on that as well mm. inhale 3 seconds tahan 3 seconds let go hembus from the mouth 3 seconds buat 5 mm. kali mm. this is when you are very stressed you can do that <laughs> kan so, and then bila dah, dah dah deep breath barulah macam everything manageable You barulah mm. you boleh fikir how to what to take what to do for the next step and everything kan uh. ada grounded uh, ada grounding exercises juga you boleh keluar kat your garden ke pijat lantai or pijat rumput and then you tutup mata dengar hmm. bunyi angin tenangkan fikiran ada banyak cara untuk hmm. rasa distressing hmm. so pick the one yang you rasa you boleh buat senang buat dan practical kat tempat kediaman you sebab mm-hmm. orang kan duduk kat rumah burung kan Rumah burung kan Yeah like me <laughs> ah, I live in a pigeon so, hole <laughs> <laughs> Kalau tak boleh buat grounding yang pijak tanah tu Buat yeah. something else yang you rasa lagi tenang yeah. Kalau ada orang tu ada tanah Or you boleh pergi taman mana-mana Buka kasut Pijak lantai Duduk tutup mata Tenangkan fikiran Focus on your breathing mm-hmm. uh, Tarik nafas 3 saat Tahan 3 saat Let go 3 saat Buat lima kali. Just relax. Mm. Just, just focus on your uh, surrounding. Mm. Nanti lepas tu you akan rasa macam wah tenangnya. Mm. You akan rasa sangat relax. I selalu buat kat my garden. Oh. Lepas tu nanti Daniel kata. Nanti Daniel pun join. Tapi dia dia buat oh. tak apa-apa style lah. <laughs> dia macam untuk anak macam my kids. Um, Amy lah especially. Dia dah sembilan tahun. Dia pun... Uh, ada lagi masalah nak control her emotion. So, dia banyak lah but, uh, all these coming strategies. So, banyak yang I buat sama-sama lah dengan dia. Ha, memang things yang sebenarnya macam kita, all this while diajar kepada anak kita, sebenarnya very much applicable oh, untuk parents. kita pun. Hmm. Hmm. Parents pun boleh buat juga. Hmm. So, much of kita suruh anak kita lompat-lompat-lompat, kita pun kena exercise juga kan. Ha. Bukan suruh-suruh je. Selalu bukan, kalau kan? you so buat Ha, so the kids buat The parents pun boleh buat juga uh, <laughs> It's calming It's very yeah. calming You mm. are sangat tenang mm. yeah. So thank you so much uh, Puan Farah Fadil Banyak sangat sharing Yang you share dengan kita hari ni Malam ni 
Thank you for having me. Thank you for having us. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Hi. So cute. Alah, hai geramnya. <laughs> so geram dengan dia. I am okay. therapist in training. <laughs> <laughs> So itulah uh, perkongsian kita pada malam ni Kita uh, Farah ceritakan macam mana perjalanan Pengalaman beliau daripada seorang wanita yang berkejaya Dan kemudian beralih untuk menguruskan uh, keluarga sepenuh masa Alhamdulillah um, hasilnya you, You're happy right with the kan hasil dia kan uh, hmm. Tapi happy. nak nak take the leap of faith tu kan Dan betul-betul nak, nak ambil keputusan tu Senang ke susah sebenarnya? You kena weigh your pros and cons. Hmm. Lama ke tak lama? You... Lama juga lah. A few months juga. I think what is my pros, what are my cons. I think my pros lagi banyak daripada my cons. That's why I took my leap of faith. I think go for it. Ramai orang kena nah, tahu banyak benda adalah satu proses yang ambil masa. Sebab bila kita fikir, hmm. eh untuk fikir satu saat rasa macam Impossible. Tak boleh. <laughs> tak mampu. Tapi sebenarnya, ya, yeah, macam you see berbulan-bulan baru decision hmm. tu betul-betul ni kan. So, yelah, hmm. parents lain semua kena faham yang proses. Banyak sangat proses-proses dalam hidup kita ni kan. Lagi-lagi bila anak kita, anak uh, yang ada special needs ni, yang tak sama hmm. dengan apa yang kita impikan selama ni sebelum kahwin, masa mula-mula dapat anak. Kita punya Uh, dream betul betul kan kita gitu lah ha. tak sama kan ha. so percaya pada proses semua benda ambil masa bukan bukan macam macam tu je kan ha. kelip mata kena ha, kan? ha. bukan sekali cakap je terus it's ambil hmm. it's a journey that you have to take with a leap hmm. of faith yes so, semoga ibu bapa so, lain pun sama-sama trust, ada kekuatan trust, kan yeah. Trust the journey, trust the process. Bila you you reda, you accept, semuanya insya Allah akan dipermudahkan. Trust yeah. the process, trust the faith. Mm. Do the best and jangan set high expectations on everything. <laughs> jangan <laughs> kena adjust kan, ha? kena adjust lah, <laughs> tak boleh dah ni kan. Ha? Insya Allah kita semua <laughs> boleh kan. Ha? So, terima kasih sangat-sangat banyak. Itulah kita harapkan hmm, ramai beberapa lain sama-sama belajar daripada pengalaman-pengalaman uh, orang lain kan. Pengalaman you sendiri. Dia boleh faham macam mana. Sebab selalu bila kita buat uh, gathering Autism Malaysia, nampak mak-mak yang anak dah lama diagnosis macam happy je. Mak-mak yang baru diagnosis hmm. masih sedih. Sebab mereka dah, ha. dah accept that anak dia macam ni and mereka hmm. dah Mm-hmm. They are ready to and they have moved on. Yes. So from there you tak rasa macam trap. Mm. So trust the process. Go with the flow. Jangan set high expectations yang anak tu tak boleh buat. Mm. Trust your instincts. Ah tu another one. Trust your instincts. It's the best thing that you can do. Trust your instincts. Mm. As a mother, as a parent. InsyaAllah. Boleh tu, boleh. <laughs> uh, okay, ada yang, oh, tu lah, ada ramai juga yang share. Anak anak saya memang nak saya ikut sama-sama buat aktiviti bersama. Itulah sebab kita, uh, kita memang nak anak kita kalau boleh paling rapat dengan kita lah. Harap-harapnya. Sebab, yelah sebab kita yang akan selesa ada sampai bila-bila dan nak untuk guide dia kan. Sebab cikgu pun betul tukar Terapis pun bertukar-tukar. Jadi kita supaya konsten ni kalau boleh nak jadi orang yang rapat lah kan. Okay, thank you so much Farah. Okay. Hmm, okay. So, how can you bantu those yang in need, yang masih dalam 50-50 nak quit the job ke tak? Hopefully hmm. this will help you guys. Pros and cons tu buat atas okay, kertas kan? Tulis semua betul tak? Ha, ha bukan down. cakap-cakap je kan. Ha. Sebab you dah biasa from two income jadi one income. Mm. Banyak benda. Kena list down. Mm-hmm. 
So harap membantu ibu bapa yang lain di um, di Facebook Autism Malaysia. Uh, untuk pengetahuan semua kita ada episod ketiga pada hari Selasa ini 27 hari bulan topik kita uh, behavior and emotional regulation. So kalau bahasa Melayu tingkah laku dan uh, regulasi emosi. <laughs> regulasi emosi. <laughs> Uh, Direct translation. Ya, ya, ya. Nanti kita cari apa. Uh, I mean, sebab kita uh, memang nak bantulah. Sebab kita, uh, parents yang dah lama ni, kita boleh bayangkan banyak knowledge yang kalau kita dapat tahu lebih awal, kita rasa boleh membantu. Jadi kita nak cuba dapatkan uh, apa terapi dan beberapa yang lebih pengalaman untuk kongsi dan kita bagi sikit boost lah kepada um, semua pada Facebook Autism Malaysia supaya dapat faham uh, uh, banyak benda dan dan boleh dari daripada situ boleh jadi independent lah untuk cari lagi uh, ilmu-ilmu lain sebab kalau kita tak tahu apa yang kita nak cari pun tak tak boleh juga kan ha uh. ha uh, so dekat situlah kita bantu tak adalah nak nak bagi uh, everything but asas-asas tu insya-Allah kita cuba Okay. InsyaAllah. Insya thank you. Okay, welcome. Okay, thank you everyone for listening. Okay, Bye. 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 <laughs>